So it occurred to me that play isn't really, you know, a static thing. It's not about being stable and quiet. So it might make a lot more sense to do a review of a game in real time on video. I think this is going to give you a really great impression and understanding of why I love Pathwords and Pathwords Junior, both of which are part of the Ask for Kids collection by Think Fun Toys. Now, first of all, I have to tell you why I partnered with Think Fun Toys in the first place. Because part of my promise for Ask for Kids is that I will never ever endorse something that I don't believe in, that I haven't already used out of my own pocket with my own kids and that I wouldn't trust you to use with your children in a way that would make their lives better. That's not what I do. It's not what I'm about. So that being said, Pathwords and Pathwords Junior are probably one of my absolute favorites among the collection. Well, actually, I don't know. It's really hard. I love this stuff. But in general, today we're talking about Pathwords and Pathwords Junior and why these are the of all the wonderful affiliates with whom Ask for Kids has partnered, um, these are the games of the month or the product of the month that we're offering you a special on because especially during summer, this is something, a way to keep kids' minds thinking and sharp and developing and ch being challenged, but in a way that doesn't feel like you know the rest of the other 10 months of the year when they're in school, um, if that's what their routine is like. And if it isn't, so much the better. Fun is still the best way to learn. When I was in college, there was a great class. It was called Physics for Poets. And that sort of sounds bizarre, but I guess it was meant to. It was meant to be enticing. The idea is that, look, we're all apt to be one kind of thinker or another, right? Some people are more apt to be um, visually, spatially um, minded. Others are sort of logic driven. Others are, are verbally driven or pattern driven. Whatever your style is, first of all, there's no wrong and there's no one size fits all. That's just not the way people are. Okay, so the idea behind Physics for Poets was that it was a way to try to entice people who might be those more apt to take a class in Byron or Shakespeare um, to try something completely different and not be scared to do it. Well, we Aspies, your Asper kid, remember, the one most prevalent feeling that we feel in various levels throughout the day is anxiety. So if we're going to challenge ourselves and develop, it has to be that we encounter challenges and new um, sets of circumstances in ways that already feel somewhat comfortable, that you help us stop or squelch the self-sabotage, or else, quite frankly, it ain't gonna happen. And what you're going to see is you're going to see the heels digging in and the resistance. And that's why um, you'll see Asper Kids resistant to doing particular types of work. If you know you're not particularly good at something, if it doesn't feel right, it doesn't gel, it doesn't sit well in your own mind, and it doesn't quite make sense, you don't want to do it. That's true for everybody, not just people on the spectrum. But like everything, for those of us on the spectrum, it's life with the volume turned up. So we don't need to feel dumb or um, we certainly don't want to feel unable or less any more than we already do. Okay, that's one of the reasons why I love Pathways. Because it's sort of like the physics for poets, only for, you know, maybe not the college set. Although some of these can get tricky enough when you get to the, the extreme word searches. Now, maybe that's not really that surprising because, see, what's really cool about Think Fun, one of the, oh, I don't like that when I hold these things up, they're backwards, and I apologize for that. But one of the things that I like about Think Fun games is they come, all of them, with a description of the toy makers. I think that is actually something beyond just cool because, hey, it's interesting. I think it's a way to show our children who are learning academic skills there are real world applications. I mean, how many of us sat in the classroom and thought, when am I ever going to use this? Well, guess what? Maybe you want to be a toy maker or a game designer and you are going to use this. And what's really neat is that the gentleman who designed Pathwords and Pathwords Junior was himself the author of um, Mathematics Puzzles. And um, he basically graduated from MIT, obviously a brilliant man, but obviously somebody with a sense of humor and curiosity. And that's pretty cool. So you're basically what you're doing is you're encountering the mind and the creations of someone who has already um, brought together the ideas of fun and 
words and math and spatial relations. So there's your physics for poets, if you will. You've got your more verbally um, directed kids, you've got your more um, mathematically driven kids, and they're both gonna find something that is already comfortable, yet wonderfully challenging in these games. Now, what essentially you're doing in each of these games, in each level, and again, I know the letters are backwards for you, but that's okay. The point is that the surface in and of itself, if I can kind of show you, is um, a little bit raised and lowered, almost wavy. So it's a crossword sort of pentominoes thing, um, word search, but the kids are given um, the tools they need to feel successful immediately. A lot of kids on the spectrum have troubles with visual perception. That is very different from visual acuity. Visual acuity is like me, if I were to take out my contacts right now, I would not even see the computer in front of me. <laughs> I'm blind as a bat. That's visual acuity. That's very different. Visual perception, if you go on my blog, you'll read, um, read the entry called Eyes Wide Shut. And that is, um, in layman's terms, sort of the disconnect between what your, the information your eyes are picking up, correctly focused, and what the brain is receiving. It's visual spatial issues, it's connecting a part to a whole, and then also it's where do things fit in space. On the most rudimentary basis, that affects kids' ability to color um, or to, to write, um, the mechanics of writing. Beyond that, and more sophisticated, it also goes to the, the higher concepts of part to whole. And that can even mean like, you know, including other people's ideas and contributing them to a, a group project. So this skill that's based in the eyes and the mind actually transfers beautifully and importantly into both academic and social skills that are very often challenging for those of us on the spectrum. So here's what is really cool. That little bump, that's really important. Why? Okay, what you're doing is, in each of the word searches, um, the theme for this one is tree, okay? Now, um, the game pieces that you have are these plastic, um, first of all, actually they're really pretty, kind of Tetris-like shapes, puzzle shapes. Well. They are also a little bit bowed and ridged, and they fit into that space, okay? A lot of kids on the spectrum do not like word searches, and it's not because they don't like words. It's because, again, the visual stuff gets in the way, as does the fine motor. Think fun to set it up so you're already set with pieces that fit in and don't, you know, if this were flat, don't move around without you wanting them to. That's really important. Well, they'll give you a theme, and notice, here's, here's the important part. Now, the harder, as you, you know, as you progress, the puzzles obviously get more and more difficult. But what you're essentially having to do is, is find and um, the words that match initially, that match pictures. Um, so for the youngest, it might be that they see a picture of a tiger, and they have to find the word tiger. Let me tell you, my middle son was not an excited reader to say the least, in the beginning. And really, most of the issues were visual processing. And he had no interest in word searches, um, nor did his older sister, who actually was an avid reader, but she couldn't discern, she couldn't find out and pick out um, individual letters or words from a crowded field. This game got everybody to do just that, because my eldest daughter, Here's the thing, if you have to find and look through the puzzle, use, it's just as simple, a, a piece of paper or an index card, move through. It's also a way to help with reading. And notice how large the text is. That's important. You should be giving your child um, the largest font possible all the time anyway. It gives their eyes a break. And it makes the process of finding information for which they're searching that much easier. Okay. Then it's asking you if given a theme, which might not be outright stated, but is implied by the shape of the puzzle, always, whether that's a bulldozer or a tree or a giraffe, which is going to imply safari animals, that's asking the kids to um, intuit, to infer one 
um, specific or multiple specifics from a general theme or um, just the opposite to bring up to a general theme. That is really important because we think differently, those of us on the spectrum. We think we are bottom up learners. We think of specific examples and then generalize to an overall concept. It is very tricky to encounter an overall concept and have to pick out possible um, examples of that concept. So one of the skills that's being developed when your child plays with passwords and passwords juniors, uh, junior is if given a general concept, how can I generate and then recall and bring forth specific examples of this general concept? You know, so if it's tree, my son came up with conifer, he's seven, but fur didn't work. Couldn't think of that at all. Or if given the idea that the word step was going to be in it, I'm walking around the room, I'm stomping around, I'm saying it has the word step in it. What do you hear if you close your eyes? Uh, feet, sounds, shuffling, stomping. We had to work through to get to footstep. That's okay because we do it together and that's really important. I would um, encourage you to play along with your child until he or she doesn't want you there anymore and that's okay. Or help them generate their own answers. Um, help them generate possibilities. Again, the idea of building from either, not necessarily always as we want to do from specific to general, but from general to specific. It's hard, but it's what's going to be asked of us constantly out in the big world. And so um, it's a whole lot more fun to do when you're dealing with little pieces of colored plastic that are pretty and fit together, kind of Lego Tetrisy like which is also nice. Now, also what you're dealing with is the visual spatial um, problem of, or challenge of, and this is a good thing, of, okay, so this purple piece is two squares down, two squares across, two squares down again. Whereas this is two squares down, two squares across, three squares down again. Problem solving. As you're going through the puzzles, you'll notice most likely your son or daughter may say, okay, well, I know that this has got to be the piece it's used because um, you're given that hint. And I love the way Think Fun is really creative and that they give hints in different ways. Sometimes they'll offer you, well, they'll offer you a hint that it's either based on the color or the, or the shape or the word. First, help your son or daughter to use the, um, the clue that would be sort of most natural to them. Maybe it's the word, maybe it's the shape, maybe it's the orientation and space, whatever way their mind most naturally thinks. Start giving them clues at first that are the easiest for them and then move from there. Um, but then, you know, you may see that your son or daughter or student moves the piece, the entire circle, has turned it all 360 degrees and can't make that fit. And they know it's the right piece. It tells them it's the right piece. Why won't it? Because you have to flip it. And then there are more possibilities just by flipping it. We on the spectrum are apt to think inside a box. That's why if we think something has to be done this way and in this way and only this way, everything else not only doesn't occur to us, but if, if someone suggests it to us, feels wrong. And so we're going to say, no, no, absolutely not. That's not the way it's supposed to be. That's where you're going to see that anxiety kicking in. That's where you're going to see the meltdowns happening. Um, absolutely in learning as well as in daily life and social situations within your home, just operating on a day-to-day -day basis. Suggest that. Say, okay, let's think about it. First, before we turn it, this is two, two, three. Look at your space. Is it two, two, three? Is it three, two, two? Is it none of those? If the numbers match, okay. Then if you've spun it all the way around and it doesn't work, what else can you do? Don't be surprised if they say, I don't know. Because problem solving right there in a little piece of plastic with pretty colors. That's what you've just encountered. We were at a birthday party today. My youngest son, it was a bouncy house birthday party. My youngest son, hmm, I couldn't find him for a little while. And suddenly over the absolute racket of a Saturday afternoon with lots of kids screaming and all the generators going and all the blowing machines blowing, I hear in the way mother's ears do, screaming. 
and I can't see him, but I know he is stuck somewhere in that bounce house. And wearing my shoes and in my dress, I climbed in. And I climbed over hills and through, um, you know, <laughs> obstacle course, and I got to him. The poor child was hysterical. He was hysterical. He was almost dry heaving. He was um, so absolutely distraught because he felt that he was trapped. All he had to do was turn around and he would have been fine. He would have been safe. He could have gotten out and it would have been okay. But he didn't and so he panicked and he was genuinely terrified and that's a real experience. As upsetting for me as it was for him probably. That's going to be the same thing that gets him stuck as he is working through schoolwork or in a job or in a marriage or in a friendship. That if he sees one way of moving forward, it's okay, Sean. <laughs> See real Asper kids in the Asper kids house. If we get stuck and we don't see room for compromise, we don't see room of part to whole or whole to part, it can be terrifying and it can also be incredibly destructive to our personal lives. So let's back you up because I'm talking about playing with kids and word searches. But the wonderful thing about it is, from the most basic fun, a combination of poetry for phys or physics for poetry, of math for wordophiles or wordophile um, or words for mathophiles, <laughs> it's all here in Path Words and Path Words Junior. And I love the expression that Think Fun has, which is ignite your mind. But it's more than just ignite your mind in an academic way. It's about igniting who you are and problem solving, which is giving our kids the confidence to say, wait, I can get through this. I can get past this. And with that patience and belief and confidence, that is how they get to be their most authentic selves and do amazing, amazing things the things that they're meant to do, the things that only an Aspie brain can do, but you've got to help us get through and then through the anxiety first. The, I can't read. Yes, you can. There's maybe a little glitch somewhere between your eyes and your brain, but guess what? We're going to play and we're going to spin some shapes around together and it's going to be fun. And after you do, and the, the reward of moving through all of the puzzles in one level and then getting to another, that in and of itself, you don't need to congratulate them and give them extra prizes. That's a prize. And it's a better prize than moving to the next level of Minecraft. Because what you've done is you've boosted confidence. And that is so much more important than one skill or another. Although, yes, yeah, you're teaching vocabulary. It might be that your child knows conifer but doesn't know birch. That's okay. Super. Why do you think the smartest people or the people with the best vocabularies play um, and do word searches and crosswords because it increases vocabulary? We just did that today. <laughs> and we had fun. Do you love passwords? Is it fun? Uh -huh. <laughs> it is fun. So from our house to yours, first of all, congratulations Think Fun on making yet another completely fantastic product. We're so proud to endorse it with the Asper Kids Seal of Awesomeness as part of um, the Asper Kids collection for Think Fun and this month's featured product in the AK Shop, Pathwords and Pathwords Junior. So you've got um, Pathwords is 12 to adult and that's Word Search Extreme. <laughs> and then everybody under 12, Pathwords Junior. <laughs> I love it because you know that is brute honesty you can't buy it thank you all right everybody have a great great beginning of the summer and I'm telling you that um, this is worth your time your energy your purchase and um, the confidence that it will bring to your kids Aww. say bye-bye Sean bye-bye bye-bye everybody <laughs>